Hello and welcome once again to this year's Making Tracks 2 exhibition here in the fantastic Chester Cathedral in Chester. So Mike, what can we look forward to? Well, we've got another brand new layout from Pete Waterman and the Realmets Group. We've got a fantastic location and, well, brilliant modelling to go and have a look at and show you all the latest information on. And as a celebration of part of this fantastic event, we've been busy with some hard work. Some hard work? For once. <laughs> For once. <laughs> so we certainly have been busy. In our latest issue, in issue 182, we've got a full feature on Pete Waterman's Making Tracks 2 layout. In there, we've got a full 10-page spread which looks at all the layout from one end to the other. Uh, we've got exclusive photographs, which you'll never find anywhere else, showing the full sets of trains from, well, mainly from the 1990s in those shops, actually. Uh, a few more recent ones as well. Uh, and then we've also got then a complete bookazine that's now out as well, which is on sale from July the 14th, which is called Peach Waterman's Greatest Layouts. And in there you can read the full story on Lemington Spa, his big O-gauge layout that's based at home. There's the full story on Making Tracks 1, in case you missed that as well. And then we've also got a West Coast Mainline route profile, and we've got a full follow of the build process for Making Tracks 2 from its very start right until completion. Again, loads of exclusive images, stuff you'll never see anywhere else. Brilliant content. And I have to say, I saw that bookazine for the first time in physical form on arrival here at Chester. And I, think, I don't know whether it's just the place or the layout, but it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's one of those things, actually. It's, it's a weird thing. Thank you. I added some photos as well. Oh, I did a couple. Uh, <laughs> you've got credit in there. You? <laughs> hey, I'm in it. You're in it. You are in it. I don't think I'm in there, am I? No. No, it's good. That's fine. No one wants to see that. <laughs> But actually, we digress. But actually, it was great to put all that together. And actually, even after all my many years of doing publications and making publications, it never fails to be an exciting moment to see that publication for the first time as a print magazine. And I think, because some people at home may not know this, but this is the last time Making Tracks will feature here at Chester Cathedral. So it was really nice to highlight all the effort over Making Tracks 1, Making Tracks 2, um, the route, etc in physical form, in something you'd take home physically. It's very yeah. nice. Yeah, and, in, and also, in fact, actually Pete's story as well. So we've got a, a full interview with Pete Waterman in there as well, and especially for the magazine, uh, which gives you an insight into the, who he is, what he's done in the past, and his connections to the railway, which is, I find, fascinating myself putting it together. So. Boy, doesn't he have some stories? He certainly does have a lot of stories. There's <laughs> just a few of them are in there. So for those at home who want to purchase either the latest issue of Hornby magazine or the Pete Waterman special bookazine, where can we find it? Right, so they're both on sale in newsagents nationwide. So places like W. H. Smith, Tesco's, and other grocery stores as well. Uh, plus, Hormy magazine is also available from model shops and other independent newsagents as well. Alternatively, you can order either of them or both of them if you wish from Key Publishing's shops. That's shop.keypublishing.com. Or if you're coming to the Chester Cathedral event, there is limited stock available here as well, direct from the layout from Pete himself. I'm sure if he asked him nice as well, he might sign it. He will. He's going to sign mine. He's going to sign yours. <laughs> And of course, I'll put those links down below in the description. So, without any further ado, it's time for us to stop waffling, and I think we should go and see the fantastic layout. I can just see it over there, and I'm really excited. Me too. It's the first time I've seen it like this. Let's go. Let's go. Tony's Trains of Rugby is located at Hillmorton Locks on the outskirts of Rugby. We are open Tuesday to Saturday 10 till 5 but closing early on Saturday at 4 o'clock. We stock Hornby Backman, Graham Farish, Pico, Gage Master, Haljan, Oxford and Oxford Diecast, Acura Scale and more. We also have a large selection of second hand models to suit all budgets. You can either visit us in store or reach me on 01788 543 442. Visit our website tonystrainsofrugby.com or find us on Facebook. The cathedral had made us realise how important young people are to the hobby uh, and the enthusiasm that you can generate. And then we went to Milton Keynes. You see another side of it because, you know, Milton Keynes are enthusiasts where the, the cathedral was just normal people coming to see 
cathedral or coming to see making tracks. And we, of course, at that point, were still under COVID restrictions. So it was, I knew they had nothing in here this year. So I, you know, because it's a cathedral, they have to have a debrief, not the debrief. I said, well, why don't we do making tracks too? All of us have been building layouts for 30 or 40 years. And this is challenging us. If, if you're looking for a relaxing time building a model railway, a layout like this is not the way to do it. Now we love it because we love the banter. Something's wrong here. Yeah. What have you got wrong here, Pete? Oh, I've got the measurement. Oh, bloody hell. Not again. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, get some pieces in there now. Cracks it. I'll get you a new one for Christmas, Pete, and you'll be right then. Right. Okay. Yep. Disaster. Disaster recovered. <laughs> because again, we're doing something nobody's ever done before. We want more engagement with the public. So therefore we're building so the public can be more engaged, that kids can actually drive trains and see that they're driving trains. Now, it's slightly different to last year. They're actually going to use the Z21 system with a mix of tablets and phones for people to have a go with. And the idea that is this time that each line, so there's four lines, will have a tablet dedicated to it. And there'll be a selection of locos on the tablet, which will just be for that line. So hopefully it'll make operation a bit easier when the layout is in the cathedral. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of trains on this main line, um, even now. And uh, even though there's no ends to it, I'm still making myself useful and having a play. So let's get to testing. I'm Alex Yates and this is TMC, the model centre at Beck Hole near Whitby.
We're down at the new mailroom at TMC where we can ship your orders worldwide. Here at TMC we do many limited editions. We've got our 24 and a half ton mineral wagons that have just come into stock and we've got our G5 that is due in summer next year and we've got many other limited editions available on our website. Here at TMC we stock all major brands including Hornby and Backman and we also have a large range of pre-owned models all available in store and on our website. We offer customization services when you buy a model from us such as Real Coal, Cab Crew, DCC Sound, DCC and any little customization features that you want on your models. We also offer a weathering service. When you buy a model off our website we have tick box options so you can spec up the model as much or as little as you want. You can pre-order all future releases on our website with free postage over £50 and no deposit required. Whether you're a customer, old or new, visit us in person or visit our website, themodelcentre.com. We hope to see you soon. And I thought, oh, Pete, what do you want to do this for? You know, it's going to be a disaster. But, especially in the time frame, I mean, he said, you know, what had he done by June? I thought, it didn't give us long. Any, any panels, back scenes, um, supports there for the uh, the big display we're having. Anything that's to do with timber, basically. Yeah. Well, it is everything to do with timber. That's just what I do. That's the important things, rubbers. It keeps you focused, there's something to do because, uh, you know, you can't, well, once you've, I mean, I've been retired 11 years now from actual working daily, and uh, if you don't get yourself a little project, you can you soon vegetate. We came in, we looked at this, and Pete had left me, in, you know, to sort it out where it was going to go, get it in the middle. So we set, uh, we set to to set it all out where we were going to start. We started in that corner there with the fiddle yard, which is what Pete wanted originally. Put the fiddle yard on that side. So it was a good two hours before he arrived again and with the second van. And we'd already got, well, we'd got all this side up. And uh, we'd, we'd got the corner in along here, and we've got the scenic board that's at that opposite corner, was here. And uh, nothing was said, everything was, uh, yeah, everything was going great, and we'd levelled it all up. Went for dinner, and while we're having dinner, I've got, he said, I've got a bit of bad news for you. Oh, oh here we go. So when we come back in, he says, uh, we want the field yard now on this side. Well, I, I, I kind of lost it a bit, <laughs> you know what I mean?
we knew, everybody knew it was the wrong way around. Okay. Just everybody doesn't want, nobody wants to say it. So, you know, you know that when, but somebody has to say something, because you know that when somebody says to you, don't even talk about it, it's the wrong way around, you know that they've all been discussing it, right? So we came back down and I just made the decision, we'll turn it around. Well, he said, it's only a 10 minute job. Well, it wasn't, it took us another hour and a half, you know. And that, so we'd lost an hour with the organ recital, we'd lost another hour and a half, we'd, so we were two and a half hours down. <clears throat> I don't forget, we know spring chickens these days, you know. I mean, I'm <laughs> after my mid 70s gone. Dave's a pussycat. Yeah, Dave's a pussycat. To be honest, like, you know, Dave is crucial. He's a major part of the team. I mean, the design of how it goes together, you yesterday, you know, you saw it. Other than the tantrums and the tiaras we had, I mean, once we decided to put it up, it went up. James Smith uh, and I'm the owner of yeah, Smith's Model Railways. Based in uh, Sheringham in Norfolk, um, just on the main high street. Really, really close to the North Norfolk Railway. So we stopped from N-Gage to O-Gage. Brands like Pico, Graham Farish, uh, Hornby, Batman. Just launched uh, our new loyalty card uh, just after uh, lockdown when we reopened. So we also offer these uh, gift vouchers. You can either contact us via our telephone, uh, email, or with our contact form on our website. Here it is in all its glory. Indeed, first time I've seen it in one piece ever. It's fantastic to see it like this. Obviously taken a lot of photographs and we've done a lot of work with it in the build up to this, but this is the first time we get to see the whole layout together. I say, because all the time it's at Pete's house, of course, it doesn't fit. So they no, can't put right. it together as odd mass. Exactly, yeah, good explanation there. They said, yeah, kind of times like they haven't tried, but actually it's because it doesn't fit. Yeah. So. <laughs> first world problems, that's well problems, definitely. Build a bigger <laughs> layout than you've got space for, but yeah, we've been there and done that, it's great fun. So it does make it a challenge when you put it together, and that's been one of the things we've been working through today, is in making sure that actually now it's all joined together, that it does work together in one piece as well. And of course, the theme, although it's a completely brand new layout, the theme is very similar. So it is West Coast Main Line themed again, but it is different in terms of its presentation for the scenic area. Um, so uh, last year's layout modelled um, several different areas of the West Coast. So it modelled uh, Watford Tunnel, it modelled, modelled North Church Tunnel, and then it moved on to Trin Cutting, and then we also had Sethrin Viaduct to Shugborough Tunnel as well. Uh, this time, this is all based between a place called Kilsby Tunnel and Hillmorton Junction, so all in the approach to rugby. And it, uh, well, it takes close inspiration from there. There's a few bits they've had to omit to fit into the space. There's a couple of crossovers that they haven't included between the um, West Coast lines and the Northampton lines as well. Uh, and there's also actually the Northampton line they've modelled, so it's much closer to the West Coast main line where it comes out of Kilsby Tunnel, because actually they're much further apart, like a couple of miles apart. Um, but to fit it into a modern railway environment. Actually, they've just made a bigger embankment. It's quite clever, really, I think. Uh, and that brings that together. I think the most impressive part, though, is the grade separation. 
and that's the thing that really makes this layout stand out from the previous one. Is Especially on a modular baseboard. Yeah, definitely. So you've been, now we've not just got trains passing each other on level, you've got them passing each other on level and crossing over the top of each other as well. So you never know quite where the train's going to come from. It's great fun. Well, I think, that, I think that adds a level of excitement. And it's sort of... Um, you should never be able to see where a train comes from and where a train goes on the layout, I think, because it just adds that mystery that's right. to it. And, and that's one of the things that I know Pete and the team wanted to create, was that, kind of, that level of excitement, that kind of inner child we've all got, to, where, where's the train going to come from? Yeah. <laughs> Especially with such fast trains on this layout, particularly. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And I think the other impressive thing with this as well, for me, is from a modelling perspective, is uh, last year's layout, they, they were able to divide the catena into two sections, so they could tension it fully, whereas this is one length of catena from where we are now, to the other end, which all had to be fully tensioned yep. at each end. So that's nearly 65, 70 feet of catenary, all tensioned together. I can say I thought I knew about catenary until I was uh, involved in this layout, and boy, have I learned about catenary. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, I was at the West Coast Main Line the other day, and I stood at a particular location. The number of different types of gantries there were doing different things in a very small space was quite impressive. Yeah, you can see why they've had such a task with it. Yeah, definitely. So I see loads of new gantry designs are made. They've got new um, masts as well, unique pieces as well. There's one that's 120 pieces of individual components in it as well. It's fantastic. So by all accounts, it looks like the trains are just about running for us. So I think we should go and have a closer look and have a tour of the brand new layout. We're going to start the tour on the very far end from where we just were, here on the layout. We're going to start on the scenic section at Kilsby Tunnel. Kilsby Tunnel, which is the southern end of the Making Tracks 2 layout. So this is heading towards London, going into the tunnels, and heading towards um, Manchester, going north, going towards your direction. So Mike, tell us about this scene. Okay, so this is quite an interesting bit actually, because well, for starters it's quite a bit compact to both lengthways and widthways as well. So uh, the real Kilsby Tunnel is about five miles south of Rugby, uh, and it's 2,423 yards long. Uh, it's a very long tunnel, I think it's got two um, tunnel shafts in it as well. Uh, I looked at a couple of, driver, couple of driver's eye view videos and you can see the light shafts coming down as they're going through Kilsby Tunnel. Um, at this point, the West Coast Main Line, the nearest two tracks to the camera, they are on their own. Uh, so the Northampton lines, which are nearest to us, they're about a mile and a half that way. Uh, and then the two lines kind of swing in together and join on the approach to these bridges. So you've got two bridges here. You've got the um, A5 road bridge, and then you've got Nortoff Lane as well. Uh, again, they're slightly closer to the um, tunnel mouth and to each other than they are in the real world, but they're being compressed to fit into the model railway scene. Um, but all those structures do exist along the railway. Uh, and then as the uh, railway comes through here, then like I say, the West Coast is usually in real port terms on its own, uh, but then they do come together as well. Now it's worth noting because we, we have said a couple of times now that things are closer than they should be, but this layout still represents a scale mile in double O gauge. It does, yeah. Which is quite yeah. amazing, really. But the point from here to Rugby Station on the real railway is five miles. Yeah. So we need to be five times as long to go do the whole thing to scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could just about manage it. <laughs> so what are some of the details we've got? on this section. I mean, I'm, I'm drawn straight away to the overhead catenary, which is dominating this layout. Yes. But I notice it's lime green. It is, yes. So uh, the, the, when you look closely at the um, wire colours on the, the real railway, actually they've got a bit of a coppery green colour to them. Uh, I believe it's to do with the weathering process that occurs with the copper wires. So like you see with copper pipes, they get a green tinge to them. It's the oxidisation of the copper. Uh, and that's what they've aimed to represent by painting the, the wires uh, green. Um, at our last visit to the workshop, they've just started painting them black. Uh, and then changed their mind. When did some more research, went and looked at the wires again, and decided actually we want them to be green to represent the real thing. So. I did feel sorry for the uh, chap who was painting them that day because he was hand painting them with a little yes. paintbrush, as you need to, yes. um, to get that sort of patchy look that the real thing sorry, has. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a short, short, short straw job, definitely. Definitely. So um, in terms of the catenary that we can see here, we've got uh, two main types in this shot at the moment. So we've got the uh, twin track gantries, which are all laser cut, custom laser cut models by the Making Tracks Railnuts group team. Uh, and then we've also got a couple of P Pico individual catenary masts as well. Uh, all the spans are from the Pico range. So most of them here are the 500 mil long ones, but there's a couple of 380s as well. So actually this gantry here, that's a shorter gantry. It's got a pair of 380 millimeter wires in it. Uh, and then the, the signals you can see here, they're four aspect signals, which are made by absolute aspects. Uh, and they do cycle through all the correct illumination sequence as well when a train passes through. So I think the, probably the final thing to mention actually is the two road bridges, which are uh, again, 
very much custom made for this layout, uh, but not in the traditional way you might expect. So normally you'd expect buildings to be scratch built with plastic card and card for the centers. These are laser cut structures that the team have designed. Uh, Phil's done a lot of the CAD work to actually make then internal boxes, which then overlay with their own laser cut brick sheets as well uh, to create the finished buildings. So scratch building in the modern day, I think we'd call that. I think it looks excellent to be honest. Yeah. And uh, as you say, it just adds that personal touch to the, uh, the area yeah, by being, right. everything being custom. Yeah. And I think by using the laser cutting process as well, it's meant they're actually being able to make unique structures for all the bridges on this layout, which we'll come to as we move along the line, which otherwise would take you years to make by hand from sheet plastic. Yeah. So I think we should shuffle up a bit and we should go and see the next section. We've moved down the line, ever so slightly, and we've gone down a bit to a canal. Yes, so we've got, uh, we're at Crick Road and the Oxford Canal now, uh, which is one of the, uh, well, it's, it's a section where the baseboard drops down to allow them to have a uh, road and canal bridge going underneath the railway track. It's a really nice feature, I think. So not only does the landscape at the front of the layout drop away, but the two lines at the back just start to gradually go up an incline. Yeah, well, they've actually been on a different level all the way but it's quite nicely hidden by the embankment when they first come out. So even at this point here, they're already about an inch above the West Coast Main Line. But like you say, quite rightly, actually the climb is now starting on the start to make the way up to the top of Hillmorton Junction, uh, which is, it's, it's a big, long gradient. This is about 35 feet of gradient in this layout, which is huge. And they plan on running full length container trains up it. So um, I feel sorry for those locos after seven weeks of running. <laughs> <laughs> they're having a hard time, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> But not only that, but they've also got two bridges, a road bridge and, as you say, the canal. Um, so we've got all sorts of undulation and landscaping challenges beginning as they come down the line. That's right. And lots of clever use of foliage to bed all those things together, which is exactly what I would do in this scenario as well. So you use different techniques to blend things together, allows you to, uh, even if you haven't got a perfect finish to it, be able to join those bits of landscape together so they look perfect. Now, Pete was telling us uh, earlier that the real location in today's uh, world, which it's modelled on, is actually heavily overgrown. So you don't really get to see nice patches of open grass and flowers and things. But this location above the bridges is actually modelled to match photographs. Now, can you just imagine the full layout if it was all overgrown trees and things? Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it really is overgrown. I mean, yeah. Again, looking at the driver's eyes uh, videos of it and looking at photographs of the area, which we pulled together for doing our book scene as well. Actually, it's heavily wooded on both sides. And, well, wooded is probably the wrong word, but there's, there's trees everywhere. Yeah. Um, and actually, there's houses not far away from the railway as well when we get a little bit further up and it all comes together. So actually, that is one of the things I love about this layout, is that the train appears there and it's in front of you for so long that you can see it just all the way down the railway. It's like being at the line side again, where you, you've got that kind of moment of, of you, you stood there and you can see the light in the distance as it comes around the corner somewhere. But if it's like a heavy freight train or something, it's gonna take a long time to get to, even though you can see it. It's just that great bit of anticipation. It's got the effect of a real uh, railway where you can look at the lights to see where a train is in yeah. relation to them. Yeah. I mean, um, this is very much real railway. Yeah. I mean, you stand by the line side at any uh, location out in the country, this is the kind of thing you're going to get. You're going to see long strings of tracks where you can stand and wait and see a train and you know, you'll see it come through and disappear and you know, you've got that kind of distance and perspective as well. And although it's quite a big layout, they haven't managed to cram in the details, such as the like the relay room and the axle counters and the, uh, the dreaded trunking has begun. So we've got a lot of layout to see, haven't we? So should we move on to your favourite bit next, the substation? I think we should. I'm Anthony of AGL Model Row Store in Leighton Buzzard, Bedfordshire.
We stock the whole ranges for N00 and O, all the major brands for DC modelers and DCC modelers. We have a full DCC sound install, which can include sound, smoke, and lights. We offer a range of Pico 009 exclusives, and we are also UK's biggest importer of Batman USA tools and friends models. We've got great links to the M1. We have mail order, which you can order through the website www.agrmodelrowstore.co.uk. We're actually just off the Lake Buzzard High Street. We're in High Street News. So if you look for Costa Coffee, directly opposite, you can see us and the sign. <laughs>
which means you've got a, a long set of frames underneath the baseboard, which have legs underneath them as well. They've all got adjustable feet on them as well, so you can adjust the height of all the baseboards to match one another. Uh, and then the baseboards are all on top of that. And then because everything's been set during the construction phase, and all the tracks are tied off with uh, copper clad sleepers at the end of each baseboard as well, then everything, when it comes together at the show, you bolt it all together and it should all line up perfectly. I mean, what's fantastic and what we've noticed today is when they've put it together and got trains running for the first time, yes, you have the odd join, but literally one or two joins which uh, yeah. needed and adjusting. Actually, it's gone really together really well. Yeah, the most challenging ones, which anyone who's built a layout for an exhibition will know, if you've got a joint on a corner, it's going to cause you a headache at some point. <laughs> it's just so difficult to get perfect. And of course, as we go up the, uh, the viaduct here, you've got custom-made catenary. We're talking yes. about catenary again, but... Yeah, back to catenary. Well, we're actually, we've about. got to keep talking about this catenary, <laughs> to be honest. So, uh, well, here there's actually um, several different types of masts now going off. So we've got more of the twin-track gantries on the low-level West Coast mainline tracks. We've got more of the twin-track gantries on the back on the single track, and also the single mast from the Pico range as well. But then going up the um, gradient and the viaducts, each one of these masts is a custom-made item for this layout. So no off-the-shelf parts in the gantries. Uh, and you've got ones where you've got this full U-shape over the top, others are just a single mast to the side. Uh, just, again, brilliant work to bring all these things together on a layout that is portable. And we should say, once fully tensioned, a Pantograph Loco can run through the uh, yes. catenary at full speed. Right. It really is impressive. I was going to say, I can just sit and watch this layout all day long. <laughs> we do get distracted every now and again by the choice of If only it was East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> only it was East Coast. <laughs> Maybe I should suggest that. Yeah. <laughs> So, but I think then the other thing to mention here as well is the, the, the bridge across the railway here um, actually doesn't exist anymore. So that was taken down in the 1960s, but Pete wanted to have that bit of a nod back to the railway history as well, uh, and also it's a nice scene break as well there. Yeah. Um, so he included that bridge as well in the design, uh, which then leads on to the actual junction, which we're going to have a look at next. Yeah. And as we can see, I think this is the most exciting end of the layout. Definitely. You know, multiple trains coming out of multiple different routes on different levels as well. I mean, you probably can't see on the camera, but there's still one right behind the yeah. scene as well. It's making it down the bottom. Revealed as it goes down the layout. Yeah. It is brilliant, this bit. I, I love that kind of you know, trains disappearing, crossing underneath each other. It's great fun to watch. I love that to be able to see the train on the back line here, you have to look through the viaduct. It's a proper big kid moment. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Getting down and looking through a layout is great. Yeah, just fun, definitely. So tell us a bit more about this location. Right, so this is the approach now to Rugby Station. So Rugby Station is just beyond the bridge behind us here. So you've now got the West Coast main line that's still on the, grade, on the level at the bottom. And then it's the down Northampton line that's up on the gradient here. And then it splits here to go into Rugby Station. So this line goes into the through line and the one that branches off down the middle there actually goes into a bay platform. Um, originally that bay platform was both for Northampton trains and also trains from Market Harbour, which originally came across the bridge from there and joined into the junction here as well. So it's, it's quite an interesting bit of railway really. And actually, if you, again, if you go and have a look at some of the driver's eye views, you can see that actually the trains climb up and over the West Coast main line on this line, and then drop back down and come into Rugby Station at platform one. Um, whilst the West Coast main line, this line here, is then on the inside of this one. So it's like a lot of the other four tracks, only got the two fast lines, to get the, the fast and the slow together, uh, going both north and south at the same time. Now, in terms of, I mean, we've mentioned it, we're gonna mention it again, the catenary. This is where it goes absolutely nuts. Because <laughs> the catenary has to follow the track. It does, well, this is where it gets very difficult on a model railway. <clears throat> because no matter how nice and smooth your curves are, they're never as nice and smooth as the real railway is. Um, obviously, the circumstances are probably not quite true, but particularly this bit here, you've got a lot of complicated, unique structures to bring the catenary through this junction. So we'll start with the most um, part-intensive piece, which is this yeah. one here, with the twin arms across the junction. There's 120 individual pieces in that one. Just over, yeah. Just over. Uh, then go a little bit further back, we've then got custom gantries all along the viaduct. We've then got another custom twin arm gantry at the centre of the West Coast main line where it divides to go into the two bridges. Then even more fun is the way they've done the section that goes underneath here as well. So this has been modelled on the, the concept of how they've done it in uh, St Pancras. So it's actually the wires come down and join together and it's actually then a rail 
that runs underneath here to carry the pantographs underneath the bridge. Um, it's all very clever, lots of individually made components for it, lots of custom made wire spans as well. We've had to modify the wire spans to actually duck under the bridge like they do on the real railway as well. So again, if you look at footage of the real railway, you actually see that the, the top and the bottom spans of the Kateri virtually come down to touch one another when it goes underneath here. Um, it's really tight clearances on these bridges. You see, I was blown away. I mean, I thought when Aaron showed me the rail, I thought that's a really good idea for a model railway. I didn't realise they did it at St Pancras, actually yeah. hang a rail from the yeah. ceiling. Yeah. Just... <laughs> minutes of clearance, need the, you, you don't want the flex of the wire and things like that as well. I mean, you, you look at the pantographs on the West Coast Main Line, and you can just see a little bit of push-up against the wire as the train comes through. Uh, I suppose that's one of the interesting things as well with the West Coast, is it's a much heavier get, um, structure on the West Coast compared to the East Coast. So you can run double-headed electrics on the West Coast where they can't on the East Coast. Yeah. So you can then have both pantographs against the wire and they won't have too much deflection in the wire. So. I mean, look at this for a model railway. I mean, it's not only going up a gradient. There's a curve here. You've got the points. You've got to go around the bridges onto the... I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic. It's everything, isn't it? <laughs> it almost works. It's almost worked. <laughs> Still nearly there. troubles to work out with this one. <laughs> <laughs> we should maybe mention that. To the we way. probably should. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Hello. So just like the real thing, because I mean, 90s are uncoupling all the time. Well, especially when they're on the wrong train. Yeah. yeah. 90s don't haul coal. No. We've just been telling the people, the good people at home watching for the last 20 minutes how reliable this layout is. Perfect. Well, that was seamless. Yeah. No one will notice that. Nope. <laughs> but these are all challenges the team have to be prepared for yeah. when running live, because yeah. it's, it's an exhibition. And also, that it's the wrong local on the train, but we won't mention ah. that. We've all done that at home. <laughs> done what? Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, actually, because those Freightliner hoppers are one of my favourite um, um, breaks at home and I've been slowly weathering up one at a time. I should just get on and get on and do it. But yeah, just, just get the box out. <clears throat> Batch weathering, get them done. I digress. <laughs> right, with this other Pendolino coming through, it's fantastic. I mean, this, the Pendolino's running quite slow, relatively, but they can run at full speed. They can, which they do look great running at full yeah. speed. So, actually, like I was saying earlier, I was by the West Coast Main Line the other day, and actually seeing the Pendolinos race through 125 is really quite impressive. And what's also impressive about this scene is not only have you got all the, um, the incline upwards, you've then got, they've modelled the cutting and you've got the three different levels again, um, leading on to the fantastic Great Central Bridge. Yes. yes, which is another structure which is no longer there. But again, the guys, they wanted to have that connection to the railway's history around here as well. So they modelled the full uh, bridge there as well. It used to be um, traversed by the Great Central Railway. Um, another nod to the railway history as well, we shouldn't go without mentioning actually, is that the bridges have got the lattice girders on them which again are no longer there uh, but they wanted that kind of connection to the past as well as having the modern concrete style that's being used more recently in the area. So I'm really I'm really glad they have tackled all that because I mean it just adds so much to a scene when you actually stand here and just watch the trains and you get past that and you start looking at the scene. And if um, I hadn't told you they weren't the right bridges you wouldn't know would you? Oh no. You'd be perfectly um, happy with them being just wonderful bridges. Yes yeah. <laughs> but it's just everywhere you look you can just Oh, this, take it in. Yeah, stuff taken everywhere. Now, there is an interesting thing about the gradients as well, which is, it was a hot topic at one point with this. So, obviously, trains coming up the gradient from Kilsley Tunnel to Hill Morton Junction is a long gradient because they've got to be able to take heavy trains up a gradient, which is very difficult, whether it's a model railway or a real railway. Steel on steel isn't the best combination for friction grip. Um, but interestingly, on the way back down, it's a much shorter gradient. So, it's about 1 in 15 going back down into the storage yard. That's because they don't need to worry about the gradient going into the storage yard. So you can have that shorter descent and save space and just get trains back on level. And I suppose it works here because they've got enough space that the train's out of scene before yes. it then runs away with itself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> so some of the heavier trains will definitely want to kind of shuffle themselves along yeah. it. So. <laughs> and of course, going to the, uh, back to the Great Central Bridge, 
it just shows you the scale of this layout because that's a meter and a half long. It is, yeah. And it doesn't look it. No, because right. the layouts are big. Yeah, but it's. I mean, it's an incredible piece of. Uh, yeah, I'm just modeling rail this um, pendolino. <laughs> Good job we we're here, really. I mean, uh... you say that, but this is actually really difficult. You've got to give it a bit of assistance to get moving again because the, the, the traction tires, when you try and put the pendolino back on when it's still moving, it just tries to grip too much, then pulls itself back off again. <laughs> so you've got to put it on with a bit of a forward motion yeah. underneath the wires, in a cutting. <laughs> It's quite incredible to see a pendolino down this layout because they don't have to look short. <laughs> and that's the 11 coach set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could get a lot of those end-to-end -end down. Yeah. Scarily. So, we've looked at all the scenic section now. We've taken you from Killsby Tunnel to Hillmorton Junction. Uh, but there is one more important part of every exhibition layout, the storage yard. So Which is the exciting those. bit. Yeah. Here at Rails of Sheffield, we pride ourselves in being the leading model railway retailer in the UK. We stock all gauges from Z up to 3.5 inch gauge, including the very popular N gauge, double O and O gauge. Our customers can also benefit from having their models professionally custom weathered. Also available are our exclusive award-winning models. We also cater for those looking for extra value with over 200 pre-owned items always in stock ready to take away. So come on down to Rails of Sheffield and see our new showroom. You can find us at 21 to 29 Chesterfield Road, Sheffield S80 RL. You can contact us on 0114. 255 1436 and also visit us at railsofsheffield.com So we've come round to, for what is for many modellers, the exciting area, which is the storage yard, the fiddle yard, where all the excitement happens, where all the stock is chosen to run on the main line, the scenic side. And it doesn't disappoint this year. We've got some new technology and... Uh, new trains as well. New trains as well. New trains, new technology, new panels, new control system. It's all going on around this side. It really is. And you can just see, just where Phil's walking past now, the beginning of some of that new technology, which is detection. That's right, yeah, so um, they're able to detect the position of the train anywhere on the layout in terms of which section it's occupying. So it's done by, um, well, vehicles with motors like a, a locomotive, they instantly give the feedback to the system. And then the coaches have all got resistors on every other coach on one axle, which gives enough resistance to show to the detection system that a vehicle is on the track in that location. So then, as you'll be able to see on the screen behind over there with the LEDs, actually, wherever the trains are, it lights up with red LEDs, wherever the trains aren't, then it's green LEDs. Yeah. And uh, also, if you look even closer, you'll see the signal aspects are also shown on that main panel as well. So I didn't realise how small the resistors actually are, yeah, they are until tiny. I saw them being painfully put on the um, wagons. Yeah, they, they are the surface mount resistors, which are about four and a half millimetres long and about two and a half millimetres wide. So they are tiny, tiny things. But this year, they want to be far more interactive with the audience. And, I mean, for those who come along, particularly the younger generation, you can actually have a go. The whole thing is controlled by Z21 controllers with uh, tablets. And uh, you'll be given a tablet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it just gets better. Yeah. Red pill or blue pill? <laughs> yeah. 
and you can, they're all wireless tablets, of course, and you can walk around the layout and there's lights everywhere and you can just see where trains are. It's great, yeah. absolutely great. It is brilliant. And actually, the, the second panel that's on the table behind us, that's the um, new storage yard panel, which is now virtually complete. Uh, and there's also mini panels for each operator as well, so they can monitor and operate their section switches and see where the trains are in their loops. Because these are very long loops. Yeah. These are like the best part of 40 foot long. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, probably a little bit more, actually. Um, you get a lot of trains in them. You need to be able to see which sections are occupied on yeah. that as well. There was a lovely clip last year in our video where you and Mark were just discussing the storage yard. And a Class 66, I think it was, went smack into the back of another train. And that's purely because the operator is 60 foot away yes. and hasn't quite seen it yet. Yeah. But, uh, but now you should. can see it wherever it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know trains are going to go into the back of each other at some point. <laughs> We're going to try to mitigate against that by changing the CVs on the locos as well, giving everything the same settings so that actually they know how quickly or fast it's going to slow down the stop yeah. as well. Um, so that will make a difference too. I do think that's very clever and it does highlight some of the clever aspects of DCC running. Is all the locos, like the Pendolinos for example, if someone whacks up the speedo on the controller, they'll still only go scale speed of 120, 125 miles an hour. Um, and if, obviously if you freight, it goes much slower. Yeah, exactly right. It's great. And one of the other things as well, that the, uh, there's going to be an extra panel on the outside of the back here as well, so people can see what's happening. So I think it's really nice actually that actually people can see the trains moving yeah. around the layout, both physically, we can watch the trains going around the layout, and you can see the detection system working and show them moving around as well. Yeah. I think they've really, really gone to town this year with how immersive and, uh, this layout is, and it's just going to make it so exciting, particularly to the younger generation, which is the aim of it. That's right, and that's one of the big advantages of the Z21 system in terms of, of encouraging new people into the hobby as well. Actually, it is a, it's a much more modern system in terms of the interface. You know, it, is a, it can be on a tablet, it can be on a smartphone, and you've got then the slider controls to operate locos, control your sound functions on there. If you've got DCC points, Z21 allows you to control those as well, so it's a really multifunctional system. Um, and actually, there's one really like, cream on the cake thing with the Z21 as well. If you get the right loco from Roco, which does cost a one or two pounds more than a standard loco, it has a camera in the cab. So you can then drive your loco with a cab view on your tablet and be seeing the route of your railway fed back from your camera to your TV screen. It's like, oh, that's just amazing. <laughs> Thank you.
So as the Pendolino comes around yet again, I mean, these things are going to be doing so much mileage through these seven weeks. They really are. In, in, intense schedule for them. We've done our best to try and bring you a virtual tour of this fantastic layout, but I don't think it's enough. You've got to come and see it. Definitely, you must come and see it. Yeah, so have a go. Yeah, it's, it's here in the cathedral from July the 18th to September the 3rd. It's open Monday to Saturday and it's open 10 to 4. I think I've got all the right times and things. If you want to check any of those details, recommend a visit to the Chester Cathedral website, which you can see in the link in the description here, and that will tell you all the latest information about the event as well. And for those of you who are, who are fans of Hornby Magazine, you'll be able to join us one day of the event for a Hornby Magazine takeover, which is yet to be announced, but do check our socials and we'll uh, be sure to tell you when that is. Definitely. And uh, there is another opportunity we need to talk about as well. The, uh, the 2022 Great Electric Train Show is the final time to see this layout in its current form as it is here. So, specific description there. So it's coming to the Great Electric Train Show, which is on October the 8th and 9th at the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes. Uh, we'll be there with stock and operators and Pete Waterman's fantastic new layout. Yeah, I can't wait. But <laughs> equally uh, <laughs> as exciting. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, you know, obviously Chester's quite a long way north of the country. It's not in everyone's neck of the woods. We're hoping that by being able to bring it to Milton Keynes as well, that actually people from the south of the country will be able to get there a bit more easily if they want to come see it as well. Uh, and it'd be great to welcome people who've seen it in Chester as well. And of course, I mean, it's fantastic to see it in both locations because, I mean, here you've got obviously the cathedral and all the history and, and whatnot. But then, of course, Milton Keynes is an exhibition as well. So you've got all the layouts and That's right, yeah. um, it's mm -hmm. just... Come and see it. Yes. And you could even travel through this junction if you're coming from the north. You know, travel down on the West Coast Main Line, yeah. get on your train at Rugby or north of Rugby, and you can travel down through Hillmorton Junction and Kilsby Tunnel and arrive at Milton Kings. <laughs> that train's going to be packed. It is, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jack, and welcome to Hatton to Model Railways in with us. Here at Hatton's, we stock over 13,000 different product lines, and we also have a huge range of pre-owned items, ranging from everything from UK Outline, USA Outline, Japan. You can also sign up to daily notifications, so whenever we add new pre-owned stock, you can go straight to the website and get first dibs on those too. We also offer a trunk service here at Hatton's that enables you to purchase items and make sure you've secured them. We'll keep them here safely for you, and you can even combine them with other orders and have them all shipped out together. That even enables you to save on postage costs and it's great for overseas customers as well. So we're here in our curbside pickup lockers, so anyone who is local to Hattons, you can have your order placed online or over the phone and have it placed in one of our lockers, as you see here. It's really easy to just come and collect your key, pick it up any time of day, 24 seven, you can come pick up your order. Our customer experience team is available from 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., seven days a week UK time. You can place orders, query anything, and you can also speak to our product expert team who are available to give you expert full-on guidance with our entire product range. You can get in touch via email, social media, live chat, or phone. We want people, we want interaction. We want people playing with it. You know, that's what we've built it for. If we could get between here and Milton Keynes, if we can get 40 people to walk away and start modeling, that would be a major, major achievement. Because everybody's moaning about the price of everything. Well, you know, the truth is, it costs you nothing but a bit of sawdust, nothing for a touch of paint, and nothing to start making bushes. You can make them from your garden, but you've got to start somewhere. And you know, if that, you know, that's what we're here for, to give, uh, but so the technology, I don't profess to understand it. We've got sort of like 199 detectors, um, but it looks great. I've trust Phil absolutely, you know, implicitly to do it. It's going to get even more complicated, I think, as we go along. Um, you know, because we obviously all the electronics we used last year, we've got to re 
bump for this for this year. So it looks great, and I think at the end of the day, you know, when a kid walks in and sees all them lights changing colours, he's going to go, "Wow, what is this?" The same as you know, and I, 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 I said this to you last year. I went to my first model railway exhibition, probably 1951, 52, and it was all switches then, you know, little lever switches. It was at the Jaguar Social Club, and just seeing the lights and the switches was like, you know, rocket science to me. And that's, I wanted, I wanted as many switches as I could get, and the knobs that you did that with, this is fantastic. This is a hobby for everybody. This is, no matter what your skill. There is a part for you to play, and more important, you will improve your skills by working on this. Whether it be woodwork, whether it be electrics, whether it be modelling, whether it be mathematics. Spelling is not my strong point, so I'm not going to not going to kid that you're going to improve on that. But you know, I mean, four years ago I couldn't have used a router. Dave showed me how to use a router. I saw Dave using it and thought. Wow, what an amazing tool to do scenery, but well, that is. Here am I carving away all these blocks with a carving knife, and Dave's got this sort of good, it's like having an haircut. Well, the more complicated it gets, the more crucial the team becomes. And not just that, it's not fun with our team. You know, we like to have a bit of a banter. We like a bit of a laugh, you know, and we do have a bit of a laugh, and we do have a bit of banter. There's a bit of a knockabout. That's what, you know, it's not enough fun anymore, you know. Everybody's so, worried about what they say to everybody. I'm just used to working in environments where people take the mickey. And that's part of comradeship and it's part of fondness, that you can have a laugh and call somebody uh, a name and, and not take offence. Or take offence for three minutes and then have a laugh when they go away, so you've upset them, you made them feel bad. <laughs> you know, you, you've, you've taken your time to come to the house and film it for three and four weeks. You've taken the time to come to the cathedral. Well, the least we can do is to make sure that we come and have a weekend with you at the Great Electric Train Show. It cost me too much money last year, by the way. I mean, the, the good news is I bought so much stock last year. God, I mean, I won't be doing that again this year. Uh, but again, you see, if I hadn't have come, a part of this layout this year, which we're really Gung ho about it. it's a container traffic. Well, I mean, I bought a lot of containers at, at, at your show at Milton Keynes. I mean, I must have got, I went home with a car full of bloody containers. You know, I mean, um, I think we've got upwards of something like 20 full trains of containers now. I mean, we've got, we've got one which is 30 containers, so that works out just under a mile. We're not sure it'll go up the layer yet, but we've got one. Well, uh, at the minute we, you know, the, the big problem we've got at the moment is cost. We're just, we're just planning a new layout to do something late in the year this year. We'd like to do something different. Um, when we started these boards were 27 quid. They're now 80 each. And to do what I want to do, which we'll probably announce at the electric train show or just before, I need another 14 boards. So that's, you know, it's another 1,200 quid, you know, it's like... Um, and I'm not, I'm not frightened to put my hand in my pocket for that uh, if we think it's going to work, but it's everybody's got to agree because there's a very short window between the electric train show and Christmas. Very short window. When do you plan on telling Dave? I think you just told him. <laughs> Nothing, mate. So thank you very much for watching this latest production. And I have to say, Mike, it's been fantastic to put together all the content, not only just this video, but also the magazine and the bookazine. It's been fantastic. That's right. It's been a long time in coming for us as well in terms of magazine production as well. We started, well, our first trip up here was in January, wasn't it? Yeah, we've been up every month since then to photograph and video and, and keep on top behind the scenes. Um, one month, I think we came up three times in June as well to keep on top of everything. It's been a really busy season to get all this together. Uh, but great to be able to share it with you all as well. 
And of course, if you want to see more, what's even better is you can come and see it here in Chester Cathedral at its exhibition or down south in Milton Keynes at our Great Electric Train Show later on in the year. That's right, so it's here in Chester Cathedral from July the 18th, 2022 until September the 3rd, 2022. And then if you're a little bit further south and you want to come to the Great Electric Train Show or if you fancy a trip down from Chester, you're more than welcome as well. The Great Electric Train Show is on October the 8th and 9th, 2022 at the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes. So Mike, remind everyone at home where they can find the latest issue of Formula Magazine and the Bookazine. That's right, so issue 182, our August 2022 issue, is the one that's got the feature on the Making Tracks 2 layout inside. Plus, if you want to get a much more in-depth, behind-the-scenes look at it all and the backstory of Making Tracks 1, the West Coast Main Live Group profile and Lemon to the Spa and the exclusive interview with Pete Waterman as well, you can pick up our new Bookazine as well, which is called Pete Waterman's Greatest Layouts, and that's on sale from July the 14th. They can pick any of those up from newsagents or local model shops or independent newsagents or from shop.keypublishing.com. No, I'm doing. I'm going to get Pete to go and sign mine. That's a good plan. Yeah. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. It's a shame we've come to the end of this video, but don't forget to come and visit and come and see the layout. Thank you as ever. Take care. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Introducing Key Model World, your new online destination for everything railway and scale modelling. Featuring exclusive videos and features, unseen images, step-by-step -step guides, railway history and the latest news. Plus, it's home to our full layout build series. So Mike, we're here again. Another one of your bright ideas. <laughs> yeah, I should stop having these bright ideas, to be honest. Join us for the latest content from Key Publishing's modelling titles, Hornby Magazine and Airfix Model World. Sign up today for as little as £3.75 per month, or if you're a magazine subscriber, bolt Key Model World onto your subscription package now. For more details, visit keymodelworld.com.